if you have your Bible let's go to Romans chapter 14 and verse 17. Romans 14 and verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. As we talked about Jesus, Jesus being unique, Jesus being God, Jesus being our Savior, Jesus being the baptizer with the Holy Spirit, Jesus being the one that sanctifies us, Jesus is being the one that changes us. This morning I want to mention something that I believe one of the most important natures of Jesus Christ or most important attribute of who he is that many times gets very rarely mentioned or get mentioned but we don't understand fully what it means is Jesus the King. Jesus being the King. The kingdom of heaven is a place where God lives. The kingdom of God is a rule of God in the heart of a man. You see these words interchangeably used in the Bible. The kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven is a place. The kingdom of God is a person. The kingdom of heaven is where you're going. The kingdom of God is what's coming to you when you become a Christian. The kingdom of God is an atmosphere. It's a presence of God. It's, it's where God rules. Kingdom means king's domain. And we in here we read this very interesting scripture that Paul says the kingdom of God is and he mentions right away it's not physical things. It's not eating and drinking so it's not coffee latte and enchiladas, tacos and borscht and, and pelimeni. The kingdom of God is not just the physical things. It's not just houses, toys and, and gadgets and, and phones and cars and clothes. The kingdom of God is righteousness, it's peace and joy and then Paul says something very unique. He says, in the Holy Spirit. Meaning there is no kingdom of God without the Holy Spirit. As in the earth physical, we cannot breathe without the air. In the kingdom of God, you cannot exist without the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the oxygen of the kingdom of God. So if the kingdom of God has righteousness, peace and joy and the Holy Spirit is what rules that. In the opposite kingdom, there is the opposite. There is guilt. There is depression. And there is anxiety with the presence of demons. There is two kingdoms that coexist in this world right now and we are in a part of the kingdom of God but it's important that we are not just legally belonging to the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is not just a theological statement you ascribe to. It's a reality of the soul, it's the reality of the mind and it's the reality of your life. Righteousness, joy and peace and the Holy Ghost. And so we can verbally say, I belong to the kingdom of God. But can I ask you a question? What is the temperature of your life? Does it have righteousness, joy and peace? Does it have the presence of the Holy Spirit? Because you can verbally say you belong to whatever you want. Just like those people who put a Mercedes emblem on a Honda. It doesn't make it a Mercedes. See, you can verbally say, I belong to the kingdom of God. But if we cut you open, if your life doesn't reflect these four characteristics of righteousness, joy and peace and the Holy Spirit, that means that perhaps there is kingdom of darkness that's infiltrating and affecting and dominating your life. And in this service today, we are going to learn how to live in the kingdom of God. Not just talk about it. Not just go to the kingdom of heaven when we die. Jesus says the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is heaven where you die. Kingdom of God is within us today and right now. Amen. First of all, Jesus is the king. It's simple but it's profound. Jesus is a king. He was born a king. When he was born the wise men came and they didn't look for a savior they looked for a king and that's why it threatened Herod because Herod was threatened that another king was born. Jesus preached that he was a king and when he died they put over his head the king of the Jews. He rose again and he's coming back on this earth not as a servant not as a suffering messiah but as a king of kings and lord of lords. Can somebody say amen? He rode a donkey into Jerusalem, but he's coming back again on a white horse. He came to die in Jerusalem, but he's coming again to rule the earth. He came as a lamb, he's coming back as a lion. And Jesus is not, Jesus before coming to this earth, he was a king. He still remained a king and he will continue to be a king 
for eternity. He's not going to be saving us in heaven but he will still be a king. Even right now he is still the king of kings and lord of lords. Now we live in the, in the world where we don't have kings. We have presidents. We have senators. We have state representatives. We have governors. We have mayors. We don't have kings and, and praise God for that because if we would have uh, guys with unlimited power in some of our offices we, we will have a third world war three in our hand right away. So democracy is the invention of men not invention of heaven. God never invented democracy. Men invented democracy to deal with corrupt people like us with human tendencies to do evil and to try to manage our governments. God's government is not democracy, it's kingdom. Now I will give you just a few simple distinctions between a king and a president. Number one is profile of a king. A king is never voted into power. In a kingdom there is no elections. You're born into becoming a king. You're never voted to be a king. If he's never voted into power, he can never be voted out. He doesn't stop being a king after four years. He doesn't get re-elected. People, it's not about people. In the kingdom, it's all about the king. And he becomes a king when he's born, not when he's voted. That's why Jesus didn't become a king because Christians decided he was a king. He was a baby and the wise men came and says, where is the king born? There was no elections yet. Because the king is born king. He's never voted into power. Jesus is not waiting for the atheists to convert. He doesn't wait for the Muslims to recognize him as the son of God. He's not waiting for the Christians to worship him. You and I don't make him a king. He is a king all by himself. You either recognize him a king or not. The second profile of a king is the king's word is a law. The king's word is the law in his authority. Meaning when the king says something, it doesn't go to Congress. It doesn't go to the House of Representatives. Senators, people don't debate over it. When the king says something, it settles it. And the Bible says that God's word, he established it. God's word he elevated above his name. God's word, now we can debate it, we can study it, we can reject it, but there is one thing that is sure and it's not going to return to God void. God its word is not an opinion. It's not a suggestion. He says it and he settles it. God has a high view of his word. The waves obey his word. Nature obey his word. Animals obeys his word. Sickness obeys his word. Demons obey his word. They have no choice. Only one people can only reject or not, or not accept his word. But it still doesn't change the fact that his word is final. His word, the word of the king is not a suggestion. It's not a tweet of a Donald Trump that you can debate and everything because he's a president. The word of the king that is final, debate is over, the case is closed. He says it, it settles it. And therefore you and I can trust in his word because it's not a voice of a president, a governor or a mayor. It's the word of a king and behind that word is power. He doesn't throw his word, he doesn't exaggerate, he doesn't add stuff. He says what he means and he means what he says. Can somebody say amen? Yeah. The third difference between a king and a president and the profile of the king is unlike a president, king personally owns everything he rules over. The king is the owner of the citizens, of the territory, of everything. That's the difference between a king and a president. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's. It means God owns everything. You belong to God. Whether you acknowledge that or not. Do you know why? Because he is not a president. You didn't choose him. You didn't vote for him. He was here before you showed up and he will be here after you leave. He is the king of all kings and lord of all lords. Can somebody say amen? Come on, let's give him a praise in this house this morning. The profile of the king is the king chooses his citizens. Citizens don't choose the king. The king chooses the citizens and this, to be a citizen in a kingdom is a privilege not a right. It's an opportunity not an obligation and it's interesting because the Lord Jesus Christ when he looked at his disciples he said you didn't choose me I chose you. In God's kingdom you have to be chosen by him 
to be in his kingdom and the good news is that many are called few are chosen meaning God extends that invitation to every person but gives you the power to reject that invitation if you choose to amen and the last thing about the profile of the king is the king's glory the kingdom's glory is in the happiness and the health of its citizens you can always see how good the king is doing not by looking at his bank account or looking at the choice of these cars the choice of his clothes or the size of his mansion in order to see how good the king is you always have to look at the lowest citizen in his kingdom how they live that is how the good the king is in the kingdom there is the king's title glory is tied to the well-being of his citizens that's why Jesus said don't worry about what you should eat drink and dress he says heathens do that seek the kingdom and everything else will be added meaning if you're in the kingdom it is his obligation to provide for you because his reputation depends on it let me say it again if you are in the kingdom it's his obligation to provide for you because his reputation and his character depends on it come on somebody Lord you can bless me so that you can look better did you know what Jesus said when you bear much fruit he says my father is glorified God's glory is when you are fruitful God's glory is when his children are dressed they eat they live and they walk in happiness now that does not mean that if you are going through certain struggles that you're not in the kingdom of God we all go through that but if you see a child every parent in here will tell you that if their child is malnourished if their child has no clothes the parents don't go around with their head lifted up and say yeah this is me no 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 the parents parents are heartbroken because the well-being of their children reflects on the well-being of the parents now with that said Jesus is the king if you see Jesus as a savior you will come to him with your sin if you see Jesus as a healer you will come to him with your sickness if you see Jesus as a deliverer you come to him with demons if you see Jesus as a prince of peace you come to him with stress if you see Jesus as the one that makes a way where there is no way you come to him with block situations but when you see Jesus as a king you come with worship and with gifts. Did wise men in the Bible needed salvation? You bet they did. Did wise men in the Bible needed financial breakthrough? You bet they did. Did they need intervention in their life? You bet they did. But when you recognize Jesus as more than just a savior but as your king, you don't just come to him with your baggage and your trash. You come to him with your treasures and you come to him with worship. See many people don't recognize Jesus as a king. That's why they can't worship because they're waiting for the part that Jesus give me hands out. Jesus gives me stuff because you're a big God and I'm a little me and I come here because I need stuff from you. But see we have to start transitioning from Jesus as a savior. He is a savior. He is a healer but these are temporary things he does for us but the kingdom of heaven is going to be forever and there he was he is and ever be a king of kings and lord of lords news flash in heaven there will be no intercession in heaven there is going to be no preaching but in heaven there will still be worship why because in heaven jesus will still be the king of kings and lord of lords and i would challenge each person today you may say well if i don't tell god all my needs he might leave me alone without answering them don't be afraid the wise men worshiped and God worried about their problem the fact that Herod tried to kill him when you worship sometimes you don't mention your needs and at night the angel of God comes to the wise man and says don't go back the same way you came in why because the Herod is trying to kill you see God will be the one who will be guiding you and instructing you I am not saying not to present our requests but spend more time worshiping than you are complaining and petitioning and you will see more prayers will be answered because of that Jesus says don't seek for those things that others do why he says your father already knows what you need worship him means seek the kingdom 
worship the king and you will see his supply he takes pleasure in prosperity of his citizens can somebody say amen i want us to be a worshiping church I want us to be a church that when the music starts playing no matter how you feel that you know a way into answering of your problems and that is through worship because we see Jesus as a king can somebody say amen come on let's put around applause for the king of kings and lord of lords one more time the second point is Jesus preached the kingdom not only Jesus was a king but he constantly preached about the kingdom he said if you repent it's to enter the kingdom and then he went on to tell many parables from the parable of the five foolish virgins to five wise virgins parable of talents parable of the sower the seed and the soil all of the parables if you will study them very carefully you will see they were not to describe Christian life they were not to describe church they were all to describe the kingdom of God Jesus wasn't preaching or teaching about salvation or new birth most of his time on this earth was preaching not about heaven or hell it was about the kingdom of God somebody did a little calculation and they said the word salvation is mentioned two times in the messages of Jesus the word saved is mentioned 10 times the word kingdom is 127 times even Jesus said in the last days the gospel of the kingdom will be preached and then the end will come word gospel is good news what good news Jesus is saying in the last days the good news of his kingdom will be preached and then the end will come many times we get accused especially when you come to our church and you hear that we teach about prosperity we teach about people living successful lives in their marriage their finances and in their health and people say well you're preaching the gospel of prosperity we don't we preach the gospel of the kingdom the gospel of the kingdom has prosperity, it has health, it has good marriages, it has good families, it has, it's a pie that has many slices. The gospel of the kingdom is a tree, the apple is the prosperity. We don't focus on the prosperity, we focus on the kingdom because prosperity is in the kingdom along with so many other things. I want to let you know today is that in the kingdom of God there is prosperity in the kingdom of God there is power over situations and over demons in the kingdom of God there is healing and we are preaching Jesus says in the last days it will not be the gospel of salvation it will not be the gospel of healing not even the gospel of you know saved and changed life but the gospel of the kingdom that's going to be preached all of these things are good salvation is important healing is important deliverance is important financial blessing is important but all of these are slices in the large pizza and that pizza is called the kingdom of God people say you guys are preaching false gospel actually gospel there's no message in the gospel gospel is the message what is the message about that's what makes the gospel a gospel a message cannot be a message message is about something and so for us as a church our message is not about salvation because Jesus' message wasn't about salvation our message is about the kingdom because salvation is the entrance into that kingdom and that kingdom has a lot of benefits in it not just going to heaven I want in, in summarizing this point I want to mention this the presence of the king guarantees you peace the principles of the kingdom guarantee you prosperity the presence of the king brings you peace it deals with your soul the principles of the kingdom they guarantee your prosperity they deal with success this is very important to distinguish because there is this notion in Christianity today that if you spend a lot of time in the presence of God you will automatically be successful in your life you will be automatically a good husband you will be automatically a good father you will do really good with finances but that's not true 
if you spend a lot of time in the presence of God what's going to happen is that you will have a soul that's full with the peace of God and you can still be broke like a joke you can still be a terrible father you can still be actually a horrible employee a lazy worker and a really bad husband or a wife why because most of the things that Jesus taught about was not about spending time in the presence of God he was revealing the secret principles of that kingdom because without these principles your life don't change for example a principle about the power of words in marriage you can spend every moment in the presence of God in church but if you have a conflict with your spouse and you open your mouth and you begin to threaten with the word divorce and begin to say things I wish we wouldn't be married you know I hate you and you had a few bleeping 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 words you can spend as much time in his presence your marriage is not gonna make it you're gonna go to heaven but your marriage will be in hell because you're breaking a principle for the kingdom of God God's word is not given to us to take us to heaven it's given so that we can bring the heaven into our life by revealing its principles for example finances Jesus talked about a principle of the kingdom about saving extra oil when you go on a journey there is a principle in that which means in your finances in my finances we have to have a breathing room a breathing room means our expenses they have to be lower than our income if our income is not that high we have to reduce our expenses that there is extra oil if you don't have the extra oil you miss opportunities like in that parable what happens you get a flat tire Christmas is coming along you live in debt you become stressed that health becomes affected you begin to gain weight your self-esteem goes down you have more fights than normal and all of that is why it has nothing to do with God's presence it has to do with bluntly breaking his principles when you go on the red light the red light will still be there your car might not be there you don't break God's principles you can break your life over them but they will still stand there and God wants you to learn his principles to live a prosperous lives and he wants us to live in his presence to live a peaceful life peace comes from the presence prosperity comes from his principles if you're not rich don't dress like it if you're not rich don't drive it if you're not rich don't spend money like a rich person but I'm rich in my mind make sure that only stays there until you get money in your pocket when you start living When you start living like a rich person when you're not you will very soon stand by Walmart there's a lot of space there with that poster I tried to be rich it didn't work I need some help and miracle money is great but if you don't have a job some of us we just need a miracle job application <laughs> I want to encourage each person today if you study the principles of God you will be prosperous there are people who are not Christians who follow these principles and their life are successful and many Christians literally reject these principles and their life are not doing well though they're worshiping God on Sunday and that's good presence of God brings you peace principles of God bring you prosperity and we need both of them in our life and that's what the kingdom of God is can somebody say amen number three Jesus is the king of kings in Revelation 19 verse 16 it says that Jesus is the king of kings and lord of lords it doesn't say Jesus is the king of presidents and governors and the mayors but of the kings now as of right now most of the countries have presidents have prime ministers they don't have kings so this is not only making a reference that Jesus is sovereign over the earth this is also making a reference that Jesus is the king over the kings who are the kings in Revelation it reveals to us that we are kings and priests unto our God as a priest we serve God worship him as a king we reign with God over the affairs of life so who are the kings that Jesus is king over you and I according to the Bible it says that he gave us the gift of righteousness and the abundance of grace to do what not just to survive not just to make it not just to live and by and by it says to reign in life the meaning you are called to reign in life actually don't be surprised you were wired by that by your creator God created us in his image and likeness and God in the beginning gave us power and dominion over every creeping thing and Satan happened to be a creeper so we have dominion over him we have dominion we were created with that we lost that dominion because we didn't exercise it over the serpent when Jesus came back and restored that gave us the authority and Jesus says now I am in heaven I am not just your intercessor I am a king of kings means you are 
royalty you have a kingdom and in this kingdom you're not a citizen or a servant you are a king people sitting in this room there's three types of people in this room today mentally speaking minds uh, my, mindset wise first one is a mouse mouse always runs it's fast that's about all that it has going for them the second one after the mouse is a domesticated cat has a place to live has some food has people that care for her and she doesn't care about anybody else but catching a mouse and that's about it and then there's a third animal and that's a lion mind speaking in your mindset who do you connect with the most do you find yourself as a person that constantly running from life running from battles you feel small in your mind you feel like Israel I'm just a grasshopper I am nobody I'm poor little me I'm worthless I mean look at me I've been through divorce look at me I didn't finish school look at me my parents left me when I was young look at me I was abused and you in your mind you you physically may look handsome you may look good and beautiful but mentally you act even like this like a mouse you constantly run but the good thing is you have a little hiding place the good thing is that nobody can ever catch you because you're so fast and you got survival instincts you've developed the skills to survive maybe some of you here today you upgraded you realize saying you know what I have people that care for me I have God that cares for me you know what all of my needs are supplied by his riches and his glory I'm a fat cat I just live my life my life is good God has been good to me it's good what makes difference between a cat and a lion though they come from the same a sort of species they're both cats see this cat is domesticated has its needs met by someone else this cat when this cat walks into a room we will all start praying in tongues <laughs> when this cat walks into the room nothing is gonna move even a fly is not gonna move this cat comes into all of the strongest ones will be literally we will be a heart will be pacing forward fast we will be all intimidated now let me tell you something about a lion a lion God the creator compared himself to two animals in the bible one is the lion and the second one is the eagle eagle is the king of the air and the lion is the king of the earth lion is the king of the jungle not because he is the strongest elephant is a lot stronger than a lion there's a lot of animals that are a lot more deadlier than the lion. Lion is not the king of the jungle because the lion is the smartest. There are animals so much smarter than a lion. Lion is not the king of the jungle because he's the largest. There's a lot of animals that are larger than a lion. Did you know why lion is the king? There's one word, attitude. When a lion looks at an elephant, he sees lunch. When an elephant looks at a lion, he sees an eater. A lion has an attitude about himself and an attitude that projects on the whole kingdom where where he walks he gets respect and he gets dominion why because of that attitude let me ask you a question today what is the belief you have about yourself that's projecting on your circumstances and people around you domesticated cat or a mouse or a lion you may say I'm not the most educated I'm not the most handsome and most beautiful I don't make the most money you may say I am not as connected as other people all of that doesn't matter what matters is what do you think about you what do you believe about you and the bible makes us to understand jesus is the king of kings means he wants to, to develop a mindset of a king where you walk demons have to scream and yell where you walk there is a sense of i know who i am not in an arrogant prideful arrogant way but in a way of confidence in a way that i'm not defined by my past i'm not defined by my appearance my age my accomplishments or my failures i am defined by who i belong to and who i came from which happens to be god can somebody say amen i want us i just trying to see if it's the ma mouse clapping or the lion clapping come on Let's put our hands together for Jesus. I wanted to ask you to roar like a lion, but I think that's going to be too much for today, huh? <laughs> it's Sunday morning. Maybe on Wednesday night that would have been good. But you're a lion. You may say, but, but I am a, I'm a female. You're a lioness. Now, don't go around roaring, don't go around roaring on your husband or wife. 
or on your kids that's not what this is about what this is about is having an attitude about yourself an attitude about your surroundings that make you be on the top instead of the bottom not walking like a victim not walking blaming everything and everyone but taking authority and taking responsibility for your life knowing who you are and knowing that the devil when he knows that you know who you are he will respect that by running screaming and yelling when you know who you are you can you can command instead of complain when you know who you are you can stand your ground even when things are falling apart when you know who you are there's something about you that reflects the character of God God is a boss and so are you not against your spouse or your children but against your circumstances against the evil that is coming against you in your life against the sicknesses you are in the kingdom of God that's why sickness is illegal in your body you're in the kingdom of God that's why nightmares are illegal in your in your night you are in the kingdom of God that's why living poor is illegal for you why because you're not just a you you may say well I'm Sanchez I'm Martinez I'm just this I'm Smith no 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 you are a king the submissive the submissive to a king of kings you belong to God and you have a destiny not just for you to take care of your family but to care for other people through you you're a king come on somebody Amen. Thank you for watching this content. I hope this was a blessing to you. If you're like me and you like to click on things, click on this, subscribe to our channel, and the content will come to you every time we post it. And remember, the best is yet to come.